I'm Skyler, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about geocaching for iPod Touch. What is geocaching? Well, there are people out there who want to do treasure hunting. You may be one of them. You probably are if you search for this video. And wouldn't it be cool if there were little treasure troves all over the place, all the time, wherever you were walking? Well, a lot of people just like you and think that would be cool. So they hide things in little boxes all over the place and use GPS devices, handheld GPS devices, in order to log their location and post them. One of the most popular sites for posting these locations is called geocaching.com. If you go there, there's all sorts of interesting stuff about why people do it, where they do it, communities of people. You'll meet a lot of folks by doing this and discover a lot of cool things iPod Touch, which came out a few years ago, actually turns out to be a pretty good tool for geocaching because it allows you to access maps, it allows you to use notes functionality, um, even to record locations as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. And that's the caveat, as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi. An iPod Touch, when it's not connected to the internet, actually can't find its location. So if you're going to use an iPod Touch for geocaching, you may want to look into an accessory uh, called the Bad Elf. And I've already opened that page in Safari, and it's right here on the left-hand side. You see it? It's this little accessory right here. It just plugs straight into the 30-pin connector on the bottom of your iPod Touch. Uh, I believe, we're, depending on where you buy it from, it's about $129 but it will allow you to save GPS locations using various apps, including the app um, actually made by geocaching.com, which we'll take a look at now in the App Store. And there's a, there are two different versions. There's one that's kind of the, the full featured version, and that's $9.99, but there's also an intro to geocaching version. So we'll go there, and I'm just going to download that real quickly. Let me take a look at it. So this geocaching application is made by Groundspeak Incorporated, and it's uh, one of the most popular. They've helpfully provided an intro, which will tell us a little bit about how it works. So it wants to use our current location, obviously, to figure out where we are and find out if there are any geocaches near us. So I actually don't know if there are any near me. I'm going to try it right now. Find a geocache. So it's searching right now, and hey, looks like it. There are a couple things. One of them is 256 feet south of us, uh, 0.34 miles northeast of us, uh, one about half a mile away. Now, even if you're not connected to the internet or don't have a GPS device, it gives you some directions to these things and also some landmarks to look for. So if you're sitting in a coffee shop or something like that because you're in an urban environment, geocaching with an iPod Touch doesn't require one of those GPS devices. So this is one thing that we can find. This person gives us a little bit of a description. Uh, they say it's a well-hidden magnetic nano hidden in a very urban area of Portland, Maine. Use your stealth. Yada, yada, yada. So I would tap, let's go. And geocaching shows me a friendly little map of where I'm going. There we go. So if I were connected to the internet this whole time, uh, say via 3G, if I had an iPhone, then I could be navigated directly toward it by the application. Um, but if I don't have an internet connection, then I would have to have some sort of GPS app or GPS uh, accessory. Once you've got that, uh, if I started walking 257 feet that way to the north, I would start keeping my eyes peeled for, I don't know, whatever they described, something shiny probably. At that point I'd find it and then hopefully I'd be able to talk with the person who made the geocache or um, maybe I'd pay it forward by making my own geocache. That's a brief overview of geocaching. Thanks for watching. I'm Skyler.